All right, so Rabbi, how was the weekend? How are things going for you? Well, it's listen, it's going great. I'm uh, I'm really excited about this podcast. I got to tell you, um, I'm hoping and I'm praying that it blesses the people, blesses you. But what it's allowing, what it's doing to me, it's actually opening up a um, almost like a portal of refreshing in my heart because. Uh, What's happening is, is I'm going back in past testimonies when you ask questions. And so the faithfulness of God, it, it's like I get to testify to my own self that the Lord has been very faithful. You know, we're facing some really challenging uh, times that are ahead of us. And so what it's doing for me personally is it's building my faith, my my own faith walk and by sharing you know, Revelation says that they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So I'm, I'm hoping, and and we'll see. In fact, if you want to respond and uh, let us know if you have any questions, but uh, I'd love to dive into any of your questions. But uh, let us know how it's affecting you. For me, it's creating a very positive faith environment and atmosphere in my soul. I love this podcast at kurtlandry.com that's where you can submit your questions of course we always ask you to uh, put into the title and write something to the subject line so we know uh, what it's about and what your thoughts and concerns questions anything that you want rabbi kurt to uh, discuss on this show so uh, rabbi um, it's been a little bit since we've launched launched the podcast on the official day um, how do you feel like the success of it or, you, you know, I mean, like, are you pleased with it up to this point? Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm more than happy with it. You know, a lot of times, you know, I like to cook and I like to, you know, uh, a, a big part of meals is presentation. So, so when you prepare a meal and a table, it's not just like for one of the things I love to do in the holidays is I'll, I'll do a whole turkey and it's great to have the turkey and it's and the way I do it, it it's you know injected with Irish butter and really good but the key is is how does it set up on the plate so you know you have the you have the stuffing you you have uh, some vegetables you know you have cranberry sauce you have you have the gravy and all those different things so depending on how you present it is it, versus just cutting off a piece of t- turkey putting it on a paper plate and say here it's the same meat you're eating, but when the when the meat is surrounded by all these other, uh, uh, you know, say condiments and things, then what happens is it actually enhances the flavor of the meat itself. So I look at this podcast as really, you know, I do live streaming. I, uh, you know, we publish books, we do blogs, we do a lot of different things, but I feel like this podcast is kind of the gravy. What it does is it just adds to what is already good, but it takes everything into a more personal level and it allows people, listen, uh, I'm really big on this is because I always say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. But I can also say to this, show me who you're following and I'll show you your future. Just like I, I, I like to say, you know, show me what you're reading and I can tell how fast you're getting to the future. So you've got to have good networking. You have to have, you have to have really good input coming into your life in order to have a holo- higher quality of life. So I think this podcast is the gravy of CLM's uh, media uh, plate of food that we serve to the world. So this podcast, so I, I guess let me backtrack and kind of walk people into if they're not aware and, uh, you know, they're listening to the Kurt Landry podcast and they want more, right? Like a, uh, more shows to listen to, something else. Well, uh, the One New Man Network. So the Kurt Landry podcast, you're listening, you can see it. Uh, this podcast is on the Charisma podcast network but rabbi something was really cool in the same breath of transitioning into 2024 uh we actually launched the one new man network with our first podcast and that's got megan marcelino with generations at the table what do you think uh uh, you know, just from maybe not an excitement level, but from like expectations wise, I mean, like 24 was coming in, we had like a lot of moving different parts, but, um, you know, like, where are you at with maybe, uh, I, I guess the one new man network. And then, uh, it's funny because Megan's actually got the first show that launched on it. It wasn't actually your show. 
What, what, <laughs> I mean, well, for me personally, yeah, to have our daughter, uh, you know, I'm all about legacy. I I am in the passing the baton stage of my life. It's 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 my biggest joy. So no, I'm overwhelmingly happy with it. You know, today in the studio, she was in on her podcast. She was interviewing her mother, and <laughs> so one of the things that people need to understand. And she was interviewing her. I I believe I wasn't here, but I think she was talking to her about prayer now, uh, and she was giving her testimony. So. You know, Christy was saved two and a half years before I got saved, and the Lord told her, don't preach to him. And praise God she didn't, because listen, before I got saved, I was so anti-Christian. I mean, I uh, I was like Saul. I stoned him. I couldn't stand him. I mean, it was it was terrible. But praise God, Jesus came in. That's probably why Jesus <laughs> came literally into the bathtub, because, you know, I was definitely a Christian hater. Not just dislike her. I mean, I, I used to do imitations and made fun of them. I, I used to imitate uh, Jan Crouch on uh, at TBN. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. I did all this stuff like this. What? Now, here's the, here's the other side of the story. I don't want to drift too much. But uh, the first time I went on TBN, the first thing I had to do is go to the Crouches and repent. And I asked him for forgiveness. I said, listen, I made fun of you, your hair, and your big furniture. And uh, and and you've done so much good. And listen, I was crying. They forgave me. They laughed. They loved me. So it's not, it's, listen, but that's where I was at. But the thing is, so Megan interviews her mom, right? And to say, well, how do you pray for somebody like that? I mean, I was so arrogant and worldly and i mean it was terrible listen i i can tell you that in my family i was the least likely to get saved so she interviews christy and christy talks about how she prayed didn't preach but prayed me into the kingdom that podcast is priceless <laughs> i can, i didn't hear it but i do know the story and so as far as i'm concerned listen and i have i even said this in israel to the soldiers i shared this testimony about her I said, you realize we wouldn't be standing here bringing you all this humanitarian aid and support all these years if it wasn't for this Nana right here, because she's the one that prayed me into the kingdom. And I mean, you could hear a pin drop. The soldiers are like, oh, my gosh. And then when we got done speaking to them and stuff, they all came up and were hugging her <laughs> and she was hugging them. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's it's the podcast. That's a pl you can't preach that you can't get on a platform on a Friday night and do that. You need this. And so I'm I'm thrilled. And the other thing is, uh, um, of course, listen, what Megan carries in the call, she carries she carries a lot of what we carry. Um, she was raised in this. Um, when we did Aliyah, the first return in the early nineties, when, um, we were, uh, doing the airplanes, the 747s. And so all the apostolic leadership from Europe, from Germany, from Sweden, from Israel, all those people, when that was those prayer meetings, those, those were in our house in Issaquah, those meetings took place in our home. And so I can still see it. Here's all these apostolic leaders. We're talking about fulfilling Isaiah 60. And there's Megan. And she's laying down. She's in the family room where we had the meetings, all the chairs set up. And she's over there, you know, five years old with a coloring book, coloring why we're sitting there discussing spiritual strategies, proclaiming and praying and doing all the stuff we do. And here's this five-year-old because... Listen, we only had one child. We didn't have we couldn't let people really know the meetings going on, so I can't have a babysitter in the house who can't hear it. So she she was just raised in it. And the th the thing that that you know, she talks about is that she learned so much just being a fly on the wall. And uh and it's great. And so when we do stuff now like with our grandkids, um I include them. Uh it's one of the things, it's one of the re I love I love people bringing their children, even if they cry or are noisy, into a uh, House of David service. It, first of all, it does not affect me. It doesn't like, oh, they're crying. Oh, they scream. Uh, it, listen, I'm glad to have them in the house because I understand the power of the impartation. The other thing is people think like children. Oh, they're just little children. They don't understand. Let me tell you something. They understand. Mm -hmm. uh, l listen, the... Uh, when when Joseph and and Bella, but but when Joseph was like two two three years old, he would he would quote me from what I said in a service 
phrases. So they're listening. And um, and the thing is, even if they're not listening at Matthew's age, he's only a year and a half, I want them in the service because what's happening is the word is seed is going in their heart. So I, I'm, I'm big on that. And uh, that's a long way to answer your question. But no, I'm thrilled that Megan's podcast is going first. Yep. And you can find that. Just search if you're listening on Spotify, you're listening on Apple Podcasts, or if you're over on KurtLandry.com forward slash podcast, uh, just search Generations at the Table with Megan Marcelino. Uh, just wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find that one. So Rabbi, really good uh, story about Miss Christie and kind of praying you into it uh, for what the topic of this podcast is about. And uh, it's just pretty simple. It's uh, base level. One thing I love that we do on the show, it's like one or two, maybe three things that people can go activate and physically do to kind of start these different uh, attributes or, or things that they want to accomplish. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about goals to grow, like tons of it. And this is a big one for everyone. And I think everybody is always looking for different techniques and something just to kind of keep it consistent. But um, very simply put in the question, how do we pray or how to pray? I mean, like what's the most efficient way uh, that people listening can can start or get better at it? Okay. Um, first of all, many of you that follow us or you've heard the term from me or Robert Henderson or different ones called the courts of heaven. And, and, and believe me, when we first started using that terminology, I mean, it flipped people. Oh, the courts of heaven. And you know, how do we do the courts of heaven? You know, it's like, Oh, I, I'm not praying right. I've been praying for 35 years and now I find out I actually didn't pray at all. I wasted like 35 What's years. Happening? Yeah. And I'm going, no, you were in the courts of heaven. It's just like a term to help you logistically in the spirit, see something different. So listen, the disciples had the same thing. If you go on Matthew chapter six, verse nine, they asked Jesus, they said, listen, how do we pray? So I'm just going to, I'm going to go real quickly just down the list here. Okay. okay. All right. Is that all right? Our father in heaven. So your heaven, your father is in the courts of heaven. Okay, so 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 if you're if you're saying this prayer, listen, I was raised Catholic, and uh, and I prayed this prayer a lot because when you go into the confessional, you know, uh, I, you know, we'd always have to once a week we would go in there and get the confessional and, and you confess your sins and the way they do it is like, okay, you say five Hail Marys and six Our Fathers <laughs> and and twenty three acts of contrition. Well, mine was, you know, I was kind of uh, an active sinner, so and. Uh, uh, so anyway, I I know our Father who art in heaven. Yeah, I, I've prayed it about four billion seven hundred and forty two times before I was twelve. But anyway, uh, the the point is is that when you pray this prayer, our Father, He is in heaven. Okay, that's the first thing. And the other word I want you to focus on is Father, because when you go into the courts of heaven, you go into the mercy courts. He is just Judge Heavenly Father. So Father is a relationship. So you're going to your Father. You're not going to somebody unjust. And then you're saying, yet even though you're my Father, Abba, yeah, my Daddy, but hallowed be Thy name. So the, in t in two lines of the prayer, you're saying you're the Father. Yes, I'm I'm your child. I love you, but at the same time, I'm hollowing, which means make holy, or in Hebrew, kadosh, your name. Then I immediately state what I want. I want the result right up. I love this. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what is written in heaven, I want done on earth. What earth? Well, you are the temples of the most high God. Your body, what is, like I always refer to uh, a good friend of mine, David Dryling, went on to be with the Lord. Um, he used to always, t uh, when he would teach biblically, he'd always say, you're just dusties <laughs> because we're created from the dust of the earth. And uh, so what happens is you want what is written in God's kingdom done from heaven and you want it on earth. So right away you're going, if you think about the prayer, you're saying, Daddy, in heaven, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping holy your name. I understand that all power and authority and all creativity of, of everything in the universe comes from you. But what I need is I need what's written in your books and your desire for me. I need it in my life now. And then you say, give us this day our daily bread. Well, it's not talking about 
food, just food. What it is, is bread. Give us this day all substance, body, soul, and spirit so that I can be healthy. That's what that bread, that's what that means. So then, so you ask for it. And then what happens is you go into protocol to create an atmosphere so it survives. You know, I used to, when I was younger, I had fish tanks, you know, sometimes I had five and six tanks. And um, so if you think about, you just prayed, right? And what you've done and you go to your Lord in heaven and you say, okay, here's your fish. You know, they put it, in a, they take some water out of the tank that the fish came out of, put it in a plastic bag, put some oxygen in it, seal it. And then here you are walking with the fish. So then they tell you, well, what happens is when you get that fish home, you put the whole plastic bag in the water into the tank, let it adjust so that there's no temperature shock, and then you release the fish in it. But what happens is the tank you release it into has to have a health, healthy pH, and it has to be a conducive atmosphere for that fish, whatever one that you brought home to survive, like what other fish are in the tank, what kind of plants, etc. Well, it's the same thing with prayer. You go into prayer and you say, okay, Lord, you're my father. I hollow your name. I want what you have in heaven. And I want it to operate in my, in my uh, earthly, let's say earth suit and in my life. I want blessings to prosper me. And the Lord says, fine. But when you take the blessing home into your fish tank, you need to first of all, clean the tank. You need to say, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Amen. So what he's saying is, if I give you the fish, don't put it into a heart of sin. If I give you the fish, don't take it into a cold tank. Don't put it into an overly heated tank with algae. No, it's got to have the right pH. If you do, then the fish will actually prosper and multiply. Same thing with, same thing with prayer. Whatever you pray, you have to understand, forgive debt. So it's basically forgive yourself, forgive God, forgive others. Don't allow offense, sin, and debt into your tank around your seed of your sin, and then your sin will prosper. Your, uh, your sorry, your prayer request will prosper. That's about as basic as I can give it to you. Okay, so <laughs> all right, so you, you just broke it down basic. I think that was pretty deep. <laughs> all right, yeah. now see that's the problem for me. That was like, well, this is how I know, it works. I know, and like I, I think that's why this podcast is, is going to add some different levels of value because there's going to be a lot of people that are listening that they're tracking with you. Okay, I'm thinking about the people that maybe just became Christians and they're just now trying to get comfortable doing this thing called praying, right? So if you're talking to someone that is a, for, you know, think either first month or like first year believer, and like you're trying to help them how to figure this out, what instruction would, would you actually give them? Okay, so that they know that I can relate. So I shared with you about with the Aliyah, okay? I got saved in 89. This was like in 90. And the leaders that are there, are serious, the highest level apostolic leaders in the world at this time, okay? And they're in my house and I'm saved like six months. And, you know, and I can remember the first time they came in the house, they're all there. They all have their different accents. One's German, one's Swedish, one's this. Everyone said, I wonder who it is. Listen, I'm not going to tell you, so just get over it. I'm not trying to get, <laughs> just, everyone, everyone would know who they are. So please don't uh, send those questions to podcasts at Curly. No, no, it does. It doesn't matter. The, the point is you have all these like, you know, generals for real in the Lord. They've written tons of books and stuff. And then here's this idiot that's been sh sh saved six months, you know, that's coming out of the world, which is me. And I'm answering your question to set it up because then okay. what they say is they say to me, well, Kurt, um, this is your home. You will start this off in prayer. And I'm going like, Congratulations. okay, <laughs> I'll pray in just a minute after I throw up. You know, it's like, are you kidding me? I'm here with like all these people that have written books on spiritual warfare and prayer and, and all this. And they're wanting me to pray. And the other thing, here's the thing is, I'm brand new to the Lord. I don't know how to pray. I don't even know. And, but it didn't matter because what was happening is God made me the gatekeeper in that house. It was my home. 
So they wanted me to bless them, and that's what I did. So, so, so here's the thing about prayer. If you've never prayed before, it's basic. Okay, let's say you need something. Let's say you're sick, okay, uh, and you need to be, you need to get healing, okay, and you're you're brand new to the Lord. All you have to do is go, Father God, um, in Jesus' name, I'm sick, and um, and I know you know that, but I really need a touch. What you're doing now, you're asking, I need you to heal me. And it'd be great if you quoted by his stripes, you're healed, but you don't have to even do that. All you have to do is say, listen, um, I need a touch. I'm sick. I need your help. Would you please heal and touch my body in Jesus name? That's it. That's all you have to do. Because what happens is the Lord is weighing out the heart. The Lord is also measuring each word relationally, no different than the way I interact with Matthew at a year and a half, even the way I interact with the eight-year-old with, with Bella. You know, I can, I, the conversations are very different. And so, and if I'm talking to you, the conversations are different. So give yourself some grace when you pray. I, if I could say one thing, it's conversation. First of all, he already knows what you need. He knows what you want. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. That's what that means. But the key is you're don't um, don't try to imitate other people's prayer. Well, you know, and if you go into real big prayer meetings, you'll you'll see it. <laughs> you'll see the culture. You've been around it, you know. And and like if if you're in one culture, and uh, listen, I so want to do my imitation of one, but then that would be disrespectful. But it's very funny. You're going to miss out on it. I won't do it. But but what happens is every culture has their their prayer, the way they pray. You know, it's like the oh God, yeah. You know, that <laughs> You're doing part. it. You can just keep going. No, no, I don't want to keep going. I don't want to keep going. Then I, then You've I, already no, started. No, it's Come like on. yeah. It's like you know. Listen, you don't. It's not like you're like you have to have the holy voice, and then God goes, "Oh my gosh, it's the holy voice. I better answer this one." That's not how this works. But so you just really just need to talk to him. You you just you, you just need. I, I I'll tell you when. Um, the first time I got my prayer answered. You want me to share that? Yeah. First prayer ever I know answered. Okay. I um, I was in fifth grade. Uh, I went to St. Jerome's Catholic Church. Very strict. And um, Wait, did you go to Catholic boys school too? No, no. It was oh, okay. boys and girls. Okay. But it was in Los Angeles. And, and I was blessed. I mean, it was one of the highest curriculum schools in 9045. It's actually in Los Angeles. And... Uh, and literally, everybody that people sent their kids there, I mean, even non-Catholics went. It was very high tuition at the time, and it's even worse now. But anyway, it was a very good uh, school, but it was run by the priest and the nuns, and it was very strict. I mean, you know, the whole thing, the paddling, the rulers on the knuckles, the whole thing. Listen, I'm thankful for it now, but when I was going through it, it was kind of you know, difficult. But what my father that, that raised me, Ray Landry, my dad, what he did was he said, listen, you get a report card and you're going to have a grade anywhere from an A plus down to an F. And then off to the side, it had effort. And, and, and the way Ray did it, I wouldn't do it this way, but what he did was, listen, the effort side of it is your score on the effort. If you apply yourself and you get a D, I don't care. But if you don't apply yourself and you even get a B and you should have got an A, you're gonna you're gonna get it, okay? And um, and my my parents were my parents were strict as well. So um, so this was going down. I was in fifth grade and I got my first F, and it was uh, F U U. So it was unsatisfactory. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we're not going there, but <laughs> okay. so I got, so that was it. So anyway, I come home from school, right? School gets out at three o'clock. By the time I walk home, I'm at my house. I go into my bedroom. I lay on the bed. <laughs> okay. okay. Here we go. All right, I sorry. can't help it. I didn't make it. I'm just going to reset here for a listen, second. <laughs> I, I wasn't the one that did the report card how I do it. That's what they gave you. <laughs> okay. So anyway. It I'm was. Just, I'm just going to move my mic. Just keep going. Yeah. Home. Just keep moving. You see. So here's, here's the key. I know I'm going to get it. I mean, I'm getting the belt. 
I mean, I've lost it, right? Not only did I fail at this subject, I don't even remember what it was. It doesn't matter, but I was unsatisfactory, okay? And uh, so I didn't even put effort to it. So I knew I was going to get it. So anyway, so I get home about 3.30. I literally am laying on the bed in my room. I can see myself and I'm travailing crying. I'm just crying and I'm crying out to God. I, listen, I'm not <laughs> saved, but I'm crying out to God. God, don't let him kill me. And like, ah, you know, I'm screaming it out. So anyway, well, my dad always got home at five o'clock. That was the promise. Five o'clock every day, you know, was it. And uh, so, of course, he comes home and my mom's there and she says, well, Curtis got his report card. And everyone knows it's report card day you're coming home. Of course, there's my sister. She gets her report card. She was all A's, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, just extraordinary. So she's over there just like that. And here's poor Curtis, you know, with the first F in the family. And so now here we go. So my dad came in and, uh, and I'm in there and I'm a wreck. I've been crying and, uh, and I cried out to God and prayed. He comes in, he said, well, Curtis, your mom told me what happened, that you got an F and it was unsatisfactory, no effort. And he says, and you know, I told you about the, F. you know, our agreement, but he says, I'm, I'm not going to spank you. And he says, the reason I'm not going to spank you is because it's quite apparent by looking at you that you're not ever going to do this again. So what you've been through this afternoon, I think, is enough. And what he said, he goes, and the main thing that I want you to do is I want you to understand that when I ask you to do something, that you do it. And you don't have to do it because of a spanking. I think by what you've done that you're sorry and it won't happen again. And I said, yes, sir, it won't happen again. So that was my very first prayer that was answered. And I also want to tell you, it never happened again. So <laughs> that was that was my little experiment. I was thinking with, about asking. Yeah, with, yeah, no, it didn't happen again. No. And um, so, but my point is, is that my prayer was answered from my heavenly father and my earthly father, Master Marine Sergeant, two landings, Guadalcanal, Golden God Boxer. This is a tough guy, you know, um, uh, this uh he was very tender with that moment and uh i'll, I'll share one other one other can i share another testimony yeah, about my yeah. dad and mm -hmm. this is with prayer okay so years later you know uh my dad uh, he uh he has a heart attack and we lived in seattle he lived in oregon and so they call us your dad's in the hospital we drive down and uh, so we come, Megan's little, we've, you know, we've got the big balloon, get well and all this stuff. And we come in and, and Christy's there and, and Ray's in there. And at that time he's with his, this would be his second wife because my mother died. And so they're in there and uh, he's in there. He, he says, listen, um, he asked everybody, they visited for about, about five or 10 minutes. That was it. And he asked all the girls, he said, would you guys leave? She, he said, he said, I just need to spend a little bit of time with Curtis. Can, can, with my son, can I do that? He said, yeah. And everyone said, yeah. And it was kind of weird. He's not like that. It was mm -hmm. weird. So, so anyway, I'm sitting there and, uh, and our relationship is not real close. He never told me he loved me even to the day he died, but because of coming out of World War II and who he was, that's, that culture didn't do that. But I knew he loved me. I knew he loved me because of the way his actions. So meanwhile, he's not saved at this time. He got saved later. But, you know, I'm a Jesus freak. And he's around me. And he's always hearing about, well, you know, Curtis went and prayed for this one. And there was a miracle. At the time, his fiancé's uh, had a granddaughter that was born. And she was in Children's Hospital in Portland, Oregon. And she was going to die. And um, they asked us to come down and, you know, we took her and, and uh, she's hooked up to all these machines and stuff. And I still asked, I asked, I said, can I hold her? And everyone was going, I'm not sure about that. And they said, okay, anyway, they let me hold her. I hold her and I prayed for her and the Lord healed her. So he knows this. He knows that I'm carrying this gift. So here's this wacko son that was this. And now he's the Jesus freak with the healing anointing. And, and so he, he got everybody out. And, and he said to me, he said, listen, he goes, uh, he goes, I'm afraid to die. I don't want to die. 
And he says, and I'm so tired and I need to sleep. And he says, and you have so much faith. And, and he says, and, you know, he says, Curtis, I don't know where you get it. Because he, he says, you didn't get it, you know, from me. I mean, we weren't, we weren't religious. Even though we went to Catholic school, we were not a religious family. And uh, he says, I don't know where you get it. He says, you didn't get it from me. And I said, no, oh, yes, I did get it from you. He said, no. He says, I'm not religious. And, and uh, I said, when you said you were going to bless me, you always bless me. When you said we're getting a new swing set, we got the swing set. When you said we're putting in a swimming pool, you put in the swimming pool. When you said that we're going to Disneyland, we went to Disneyland. When you said you would spank me if I did this, you spanked me. So what happens is you were absolutely consistent. And I realize now that as a Christian, having that consistency in the, in, in the parenting was crucial when I made the transition from trying to trust in the flesh to trusting in the spirit, somebody I can't see. So I said, really, the reason I can trust Heavenly Father, my God, through Jesus, is because of your consistency, it laid a good foundation for me to trust in my Father. And he, he just said, wow. He said, listen, I'm so tired, I need to sleep. He said, and he's not like, man, this is a man's man, you know, and he took his bear claw size hand, you know, this is a square jaw, thick neck Marine. Put his hand in my hand. He said, would you hold my hand so I could go to sleep? Because he says, if I know you're here, I'll be able to sleep. Hmm. So I'm holding his hand. He goes to sleep. And I didn't want to scare him. But I told the Lord, I said, Father God. So this is a prayer thing. This is my prayer. Father God, I need a, I need a favor. I need a favor. This man wasn't responsible for me. He came into an orphanage, took responsibility, and raised me. Didn't have to do it. He protected, took care of me, fed me, housed me. He did everything for me. And now... He needs not only to sleep, but I said, would you heal him? Because I said, Father, and this is the prayer. If you heal him, he'll know you're real and he'll come to you. And then we'll be in heaven together when he does die. That was my prayer in Jesus' name. So he falls asleep. I put his hand back over on his tummy and I slip out of the room. That night, he has another heart attack. And the heart attack he has, it's in the medical records, it's called a mother nature bypass. So what happens is the heart attack actually blasts open where the blockage was. Mm. The next day he left the hospital, he was totally healed. That's pretty wild. And, yeah. and then he got saved. And he was saved for probably about six or seven years. And then the favorite thing that he liked to do was to go to Denny's. He was a very simple man. He used to always say to me, Curtis, I don't get it because I'm a foodie. He said, Curtis, you live to eat. you love to eat and I eat to live. But his favorite meal was to go to Denny's and get a Grand Slam breakfast. So one morning he went to bre breakfast and eating at Denny's and was having his favorite meal at his favorite Denny's right there near his house in Salem, Oregon. And he quietly passed away right there in the restaurant. And I had the honor and the privilege of doing his funeral and being able to tell the family that he was saved. His name was in the book and we'll all see him again. And um, so it, the, the whole story of it was, was a blessing because the Lord told me, he, he, he said years ago to Christy and I, when we went into full-time ministry doing all the crazy stuff with Israel, which believe me, I can't tell you the pressure of it, but did you ever tell him about that moment in that prayer in Oregon at the hospital? Did I ever talk to him about it? Mm -hmm. No, 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 I didn't. He knew. Yeah. Um, he was a very, uh, very private man and, a, a very, a very humble man. He, uh, um, and really a war hero with what he did in world war two. 
but he never, he never, he was one of these ones that never talked about it. So he talked about it toward the end of his life, what happened in the war, and that helped me to understand him a little better. But, but, but here's the key is, is that all this stuff about prayer, you just need to ask the Lord. So I'm five, I'm in fifth grade. I cry out to God. He answers my prayer. I'm, I don't know what age I was when I prayed with my dad. It was probably 50 ish, 40, 50. And, um, uh, and he healed him. Um, and, and I could go through and I prayed for, for his fiance's granddaughter. And, um, and it was really different because I, I, the Lord said, I want you to hold her and take her out of the room you're in and, uh, and just pray for her. And I did. And the Lord miraculously healed her. So all these things are people, people know this in, in the family. So we, what happened is, the, when when the Lord when we t when Christy and I said we're going to make a commitment to holy follow after you and do this whole Israel thing now this is in the nineties this is listen it's not like now where it's kind of fashionable to stand with Israel I mean we every, we were called everything under the sun but the Lord said if you take care of my work I'll take care of all of yours understanding that with Christy's prayer the first person that got saved was me and our whole family is not saved. And our whole family also was self-employed entrepreneurial people, most of them pretty well off, and but yet good people, good, nice people. And, and those are the hardest people to lead to the Lord because like Christie's dad is like, okay, uh, I'm charitable. I take care of other people. I'm nice. That should be good enough. My, you know, If God doesn't want a nice person, then he doesn't want me. I'll just go to hell. You know, that kind of crazy talk. In our family, Christie's mom and dad, my adoptive and biological parents all came to the Lord. All the cousins, every, everyone, everyone. Uh, and now Christy and I are the, old, we're, we're the patriarchs now. We're the, the last here, but the Lord saved everyone. And so I, I really think it was because of Christy's prayer. And I think our obedience stands to the call. And so um, sometimes you just have to pray, Lord, give me strength that as I start to walk out in the Lord, you know, and, and everybody's family. Uh, when you get radically saved, I mean, where you and Morgan came from, out of that background into this, you've got to be able to have the strength to trust that they're going to misunderstand. Where I get my strength for the compassion for it is I remember the unsaved Kurt, who was like Saul, making fun of the Jan Crouches and the stuff. And of course, I'm not that now. So what happens is the people who come against you, that's why the scripture says in Romans, it says, bless those who curse you because you used to curse people. So give them patience before they wake up and pray for that patience so that they can, um, until they come into the light. Man. <laughs> That's good stuff, Rabbi. If this podcast has blessed you, if you've enjoyed this content, please consider uh, rating this podcast on Spotify, Apple, just wherever you're listening to your podcasts, uh, on Amazon Music, YouTube Music, just wherever. If you'll give it a review, hopefully you'll give it five stars. Um, if it's blessed you, if you love the content, um, it, it gives us great feedback. It gives us direction and, and uh, know that it's just providing value to people listening. Um, you know, Rabbi, as we get ready to wrap up this episode, it, one big thing I really picked away um, that you gave me this super deep, complex <laughs> courts of heaven and I, I, you gave it to me strong and then you gave it to me super simple for other people that might... Or, that are definitely going to be in different walks of their faith that need practical and relational experience. But I think the big thing that I took away from it is that the simplicity of prayer is a relational thing. It's a relationship and it's much like salvation, right? And I, I just kept hearing notes of relationship, relational, um, you know, because like even when you're little and you were trying to get out of get, you know, I, I guess getting your butt whooped. Right. And, and, and like really getting in trouble. And then your progression as you got older. Right. And then you met Miss Christie and then you're at the hospital in Oregon. And, you know, now you're sitting here. It's a progression of the relational side, the relationship with the father. 
that I'm really starting to hear notes of? Listen, it's everything is relationship. And so at CLM, we have a lot of employees, okay? And to be honest with you, I'm not one of these people, like they say, well, I have all these kids and I love them all the same. Um, you may love your children all the same, but you interact with all of them based, if you're really attentive, you're going to interact with them in different personality. So with all the employees here, I interact with each one into where I think will be most effective to help them understand what I'm trying to communicate. So I don't treat everybody. It's not like the same thing. It's not cookie cut. And if I can share with people in prayer, um, don't become a chameleon or a robot to the culture of how you, you pray. J just be real with God. You, you, you have to be, and, and people, listen, and the other thing is, if you're a person who prays a lot and God answers the prayer, they're going to come to you. I'll close with this one testimony. So Paul and I, my son-in-law, we go to Israel and um, we're, we're working on some uh, business stuff we do there. So we go into a meeting and um, there's high level, high level Knesset members. And the ones we're meeting with are Orthodox. So these are Orthodox Jewish guys, you know, the curl, the black suit, the big hats, the whole thing. And um, one of them couldn't come to the meeting because he had had a bypass surgery, had a heart attack and triple bypass. And so I said, okay, well, it's no big deal. I said, listen, we can meet with them the next time we come. What we were doing was a preliminary step and it was going to take three trips anyway. So this was the first trip. And um, the other Orthodox guy said, oh no. He said, rabbi, this other rabbi, he says, he, he, he has to meet with you. And I said, no, we can do it. Listen, he just had a bypass three days ago. He said, no, he's going to, he wants to meet with you. I said, no, please, please. He said, he said to me, he said, rabbi, Call me rabbi. He said, he wants you to pray for him. And this is an Orthodox rabbi and knows that I'm the Jesus guy. And uh, I said, okay. So we went to a hotel where we know the manager and, you know, they have those private suites on the upper, uh, at up, upstairs. And what they did is they sent security in there and blocked that off. And this Knesset rabbi comes in and he still got the, the, the little stickers from what you know where they do all the heart monitoring and stuff so he came out from his house there and he doesn't speak any english total hebrew i have never met him before but i had prayed for a friend of his that had cancer was supposed to die and the lord healed him mm -hmm. and so he said he evidently said to him he says listen we're meeting with paul and kurt he said make sure you have kurt pray for you and he didn't come so anyway i'm just saying so i go in and i had to explain to him i said listen i'm not a healer okay it's not me okay i said i have a gift but the gift is from the lord is from yeshua so i said when i pray i have to pray for you in yeshua's name because it's not me i mean i'm i'm not like the gift doesn't belong to me it flows through me he says all right so he's good with that. And the translator translates and Paul speaks Hebrew and he's translating to him. And I'll never forget it. Paul tell you, he unbuttons his shirt. This is an Orthodox Jewish guy. <laughs> he's got the stickers on there and he wants me to put my hand in on his heart. And I do. And man, I felt the heat coming through my hand. And I prayed for a Lord, you heal him in Yeshua's name because he was afraid. And I prayed for him, the peace of God, the shalom comes and the Lord healed him. <laughs> So there you go. So, and that's why you've been with us, Israel. And people say, well, why do you, it's not just the humanitarian aid. They, they sense that this person prays and gets results. And if I could say anything, the results come. It's not about me. I'm not trying to exalt my ministry. Listen, it's just a calling. But my whole walk with the Lord has been fueled by relationship. It's just relationship. And the other thing is I gave up years ago trying to explain my relationship with Jesus and the Lord to people because it's personal. It would be, I don't think as married couples, I don't think you should ever discuss intimacy with anyone. It's between you and your spouse. Uh, it's holy. It's a gift. I don't think you should ever talk about it, even with girls, with girls, guys. It should be off. It should be off limits. And I think some of the stuff that you talk to God about should be off limits as well. I think it has to remain special. And then it does. So when you get into that situation, whether you're in fifth grade and you don't want to get a, a whooping or or you need somebody to be healed, you need to be able to go in there. And like I said, and say, Lord, I need a favor. And he gave it to me. 
That's good stuff. Wow. Podcast at KurtLandry.com. If you've got questions, you've got uh, topics that you know you'd like us to talk about. Uh, you know, Rabbi, we'll just add them up. If we get a ton of uh, the same topics, I guess that'll probably tell us what people want extra information about and kind of have you speak into it. So again, you can send that over at podcast at KurtLandry. Dot com. Also, if you love this episode, if it helped you, if you've made it to the deep end, do one more thing. Subscribe, uh, follow, download this podcast, um, leave it a review, give it some stars. That would help out a ton. All right, Rabbi, that's going to do it for this episode. You have a good rest of the day. You have a good weekend. And we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, Daryl. Shalom. Hey, before you go, I got something really exciting I want to share with you. It's an opportunity for you to be a part of us as a One New Man Covenant subscriber. This membership is going to allow you to receive weekly prophetic words and also content that's not available to the general public. Your membership is going to help us to be able to bring better content, more content, and more education to you. What is needed in this day and hour is good information. So become a One New Man Covenant subscriber for Kurt Landry Ministries, and I want to thank you in advance.